Well, we are five years in with this homesteading malarkey on this property. What have we done really well that I would definitely repeat again if we were setting somewhere else up? Stick around right to the end to find out my number one favorite thing that we installed here that I would definitely, definitely do again. Number 20, I'm counting down. Is that okay? Number 20 was definitely spending a lot of time planning before we actually put anything into place. I embrace the permaculture idea of zones where the things closest to the house are the things you access every day. And then you start working your way out from there. So stuff a little further away is stuff you might access a couple of times a week, all the way down to way off down the hill is the stuff that we just pretty much never go to. Well. I lie. My daughter goes down there a couple of times a week. She's trapping possums. So when it came to planning our vegetable garden, when it came to planning our food forest, where it came to just our general layout, we spent a lot of time planning before we actually started putting things in place. And I think that has probably saved us a lot of time, a lot of heartache and a lot of money as well. Number 19 would definitely be meeting the community. When we first moved here, <sighs> We accidentally took out a power line with a tree that was being felled but it actually turned into a real blessing because it meant that we went round all of our neighbours that we had cut the power off to with some pikelets and jam and cream as a peace offering and we were able to meet everybody. It was a really Whilst it wasn't a great way to meet the neighbours, it was a great way to meet the neighbours. I don't recommend taking out the power though. You could just turn up with some cake or muffins. I'm sure people would be happy with that. What's the best thing that you've done on your homestead? Let us know in the comments below. Number 18 is to stop hauling water. We have set up hoses as many places as we can. And we've set up these big totes, the, what are they called? RBC, R ABC, those big, <laughs> these big water totes. We've set those up um, so they collect water off a lot of our animal sheds and then we can run hoses to all our waterers so that we're not having to haul water. Hauling water sucks. Number 17 is definitely water storage. So with running the hoses, we've got these big totes of water. So we're not having to use our own water to feed the animals. Number 16 was we put the firewood with nice, easy access to the house. It's really easy for us to drive down the drive and drop firewood there. And it's really easy for us to just take the bins that we collect the firewood in around to our woodshed. It's nice and close to the house and it makes things during the winter when it's cold outside so much easier. Number 15 is using weed mat. Now I started out being really, really against putting plastic anywhere in the garden. And then I realized just how much easier it is when you don't have weeds growing everywhere. So my strawberry patch has weed mat on it and our survival garden for this season will also have weed mat on it. And we've bought really good quality stuff that will last more than one season. So it's not so wasteful. Number 14 was putting an access road down so that we can access the bottom of the hill. It has taken us four years to get that in but by golly is it a life changer. Our property is really steep and we've got a lot of prickly prickly gorse on it so getting down the hill was something that I mostly left to the kids. Out here being rural we get a lot of power cuts and our line user charges are tied to how much electricity we use and so our power bills were getting so expensive. If we were running an incubator and some heat lamps as we often are in springtime our power bill sometimes was $750. Investing in some solar out here was an absolute no-brainer. So when the grid goes down, because we get a lot of power cuts out here, our power pretty much just keeps ticking along. So my next three things were particular animals that we have invested in. The first one being Cooney Cooney pigs. I have loved having the Cooney Coonies. They're small and they're friendly. They do take a lot longer to grow. And their meat is a little fattier than like an, a normal pork pig. But we use the pork mostly for bacon and ham anyway, and for plenty of lard. And so for us, the fattiness is not a bad thing. And I find the pigs, they're delights to have. They eat a lot of our family food scraps. Predominantly, we raise them on grass anyway. So the fact that they take up to 18 months to grow out is not actually the end of the world for us. And I just really like having them here. The babies are so cute. The next one of course is chickens and we are changing what we're doing with the chickens this year. I have kept a lot of different breeds and we were selling fertile eggs. It's just not worth doing. So we're gonna be sticking to our egg laying chickens, focusing on those. I think we'll probably keep the light Sussex because they're some of my favorites and 
if we needed to breed our own meat chickens, they would be the ones that I would keep for that. One of the first things we got when we moved here was actually a couple of goats. I've grown up with milking goats, especially the sunny and the big white ones. I really adore them. I love snuggling up against them when you're milking them. I like using the milk to make cheese and I've just found them really helpful to have on the homestead. And of course, because we have so much gorse here, and the goats eat the gorse. So they were like a no brainer for us to get these uh, goats. And so we've still got Edith, our original goat that we got back then. And she is a real sweetie. She's just given us twin dolings this year, which we will definitely be keeping. Number nine was getting some herbs established here. It was one of the first gardens I planted out was our, actually our herb garden. And the lavender plant is now this massive big you know three or four four foot wide lavender plant but when I first put it in it was only sort of this big uh, I have a real interest in uh, using medicinal herbs and um, expanding my knowledge around there and so having this garden that while I'm not using the herbs from it very often yet I know what a lot of them are and I'm slowly adding the medicinal ones in there as well number eight was installing some raised beds in my vegetable garden area I have found that the raised beds help me mentally plan the garden a lot better. I'm able to keep on top of the weeds a lot better. I have found when they were in the ground beds, I was stomping on them. I would forget which ones I had put what mixtures into and what seeds I put into. Number seven was something that we did out of necessity, but actually I'm really glad we did it. And that is building as we were able to afford it. And it has meant that as we've got animals, we've been able to build purpose-built sheds for them. And we haven't overcapitalized. We've mostly used cheap materials. But it does mean our sheds are a little bit of a mishmash, but it also means that they're purpose-built. They're the right size for what we have. And we haven't spent more money than what we had. Something we did invest in though was putting some concrete paths down because our place is a bit of a hill. The water from our whole backyard tends to run down there and it was settling on the paths and it got to the point where we were like shin deep in mud and you'd step, um, go to take a big step and you step out of your gum boot. Your rubber boot was left in the mud behind you which of course then meant you put your foot in the mud. So one of the best things we did was actually to invest in getting some proper concrete paths put down there. We bought some larger trees and so that means that some of our fruit trees are much closer to production and it means that they have grown and made really good shelter for us nice and quickly. Contrasting to that, I've grown a lot of things from seed and that has meant that I've been able to grow plants that we can't buy as trees here. Number three was definitely getting the tunnel house. That has increased our food production significantly. It has meant that I can grow uh, greens and those sorts of plants during the winter and it has meant that we can grow tomatoes and peppers which means I haven't bought canned tomatoes for the last four years. And the toss up between number one and number two was quite strong. It took me a while to decide, but number two I have decided was fencing in our vegetable garden. It is bird proof. And I think if I was to do it again, I would probably make it butterfly proof because the butterflies that keep getting in there to lay eggs on my brassicas do my head in. But having an ability to keep, well, possums out for one thing, but also to keep out the blackbirds that go in there and they dig up my seedlings all the time. And it has increased my production in that garden quite significantly. And at the same time, decreased my frustration and anger at blackbirds. And my number one best investment that we have put into this homestead is definitely my fire. This is a New Zealand designed fire. It heats our space it heats our hot water I cook in it I cook on it I've even been known to use the pressure canner on the top of it and also when our hot water gets hot enough the radiators kick on and we end up with central heating through the rest of the house during the winter this is hands down my best investment yet here and the one thing I want to change with it is to hang a rack up so I can also use it as a food dryer so I hope you found that helpful if you have hit the like button and maybe check out one of these other videos that you might also find helpful.